SpaceX was a huge success with the astronauts linking up to the International Space Station. And here we have the astronaut experts, Anthony and Frankie C on the Anthony on Air podcast. How's it going, man? <laughs> That's us, two uh, communications majors talking about space. <laughs> about to give you a whole sense. bunch of opinions on SpaceX. <laughs> <laughs> we know what we're talking about. You um, see the... Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Is the is the last thing I know about going to space. Right, you're you're listening and watching people who have seen Apollo thirteen over two hundred times. Okay, there's no better place to get this sort of insight and information. Look no further. <laughs> um, by the way, obviously, there's a lot of craziness going on in the world today. Obviously, uh, we stand, uh, you know, to fight against injustice. And I uh, just want to throw that in there and, and get that out of the way quickly that uh, we're not ignoring what's happening in the world, but a lot of people are talking, a lot of people much more qualified than we. What we're good at is making jokes and distracting you. So that's what we're going to do today. Sounds like a plan. I and mean, being a little generous there with the good at, we do it, <laughs> but it's up to you guys to decide if we're good at it. I don't know. Excellent point. That is true. We try. <laughs> There's yeah. a try there. Um, let's talk about SpaceX. I'm super excited about this. Uh, I followed it on on uh, Saturday, the launch. There's the suits right there. Uh, I like sharp. that. They look really sharp. And let, let's, let's dive into how they look, what they did. Uh, by the way, they landed like quickly. Like they were there like what, in a day or something like that? Well, yeah, they're not going to the moon. They're going to the space station. Yeah. Um, which, again, I don't know. You don't know where the space station is? Far is away from. Uh, lost me a second. I don't know how far it is away from the from Earth. Doesn't feel like it could be that far now that like, because because I, I was like, oh, they went up, they launched, and then I like I went on Twitter like like a day later, and I was like, they were they were like climbing through the capsule and doing a broadcast. And I was yeah. Like, Damn. They they got there pretty quick. I was watching. I watched the launch, and they were saying how fast they were going. And the speed. I don't know how they get up to that speed, but once they're in orbit, they're going like thousands of miles an hour. It's I know. Like, how do they even reach that speed? Isn't that crazy? Like, I, also... can, I can understand. Be I can understand not being affected by the speed and the speed not mattering. But how do they get the rocket to even go that fast? It's unbelievable. It also weirds me out too that they're they they continue to just go that fast without any rock, you know, without propulsion. You know, I mean, yeah, I, they're I, just floating. I get what you're saying, and the wise ass answer to what you're saying is propulsion, Frank. But uh, but I understand, well, like I I get what you're like. It's crazy, but it's crazy to me to think that they stay in space without doing anything, and it's just. It's still going. Here, here's a little fact for you. Right now, the space station is orbiting Earth at an amazing speed of 4.7 miles per second. Jesus. Per second. How the hell does it get that? I mean, I'm sure going into space, there's nothing. Uh, there's no there's no wind to stop you or slow you down. But you have to be able to. It's like throwing a pitch. Your arm has to be able to go 90 miles an hour, right? In order for the ball to go 90 miles an hour? Yeah. I mean, we have to be able to reach that speed in order to stay and maintain that speed. Actually, I don't know if that's entirely true. I don't know. No? I, I, I'm not sure. And it's weird, too, because I think about, like, because now we're getting into physics and stuff, but I think about, like, a hockey slap shot. Like, you ever see that video, that slow-mo video of them taking the slap shot and the bend of right, the stick? Right, the stick, right. But with a baseball player, there's no stick. It's just his arm. His arm is flipping around. At one point or another, his arm has to reach, or at some point, part of, maybe his hand has to go that speed, no? He can't throw, his hand. if his hand's moving at, 70 miles an hour how would the ball go to 90 because i think it's smaller than he than than he is and his hand is i'm not sure i, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea it doesn't make any sense to me yeah i'm sure there are people who are way into physics watching us or listening to us right now going these two morons i have no idea what they're talking about and you're right we don't 
I literally yeah, have a, 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 a physicist like on tap, like this guy who is like an expert in all the stuff in NASA. And I, I could easily call him right now. <laughs> probably good love... thing we're not utilizing his knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's more fun if we guess. Well, you know what I was going to say? This is the beautiful part about going into space. It reminds us of how small we are, how little we know. You know what I mean? Like it's it's that wonderful time where you can literally just pause and be like, "Wow, there's so much out there and there's so it's much insane. that we Yeah. It's so it's mind-boggling. And we that's not even I mean, look how far we've gone. We haven't even made, made it to Mars yet. We put stuff there. But a person has, you know, and that's like the tiniest fraction off of our our planet. Yeah. Compared to the rest of, you know. So this a little rude space that we're east. that we just put stuff there though too isn't it a little rude i feel like a somebody, presumptuous of us a little bit a little bit you know i was just gonna land some crap spy on whatever's out there aliens are gonna we get sent there some stuff out to pluto so that's good aliens are gonna get to mars trip over our stuff and be like what the heck? who put this here <laughs> <laughs> we this wasn't here before <laughs> this was not here the last time we were landed here what the hell a Martian's getting fired for that one. <laughs> so the the SpaceX shuttle, uh, let's see, traveling in orbit at seventeen thousand five hundred miles an hour. That's, My cousin had a Camaro that could do that off the line, actually. So that's not you know. Well, in in five, how many seconds? I'm just being that guy that's always like, well, I, you know, I had a cousin who had a car that was like so fast. <laughs> The guy that has to top everything you say, well, yeah. that was just nothing. <laughs> I've gone that fast. I've been on roller coasters that went that fast. It's, um, it's amazing. It really, really is. And it's also amazing, too, of, like, the, the technology of it all. Like I, like I said, I tuned into the broadcast where they were broadcasting back to Earth, and they had, like, really beautiful microphones and high-def camera. It's so different from where the world was, you know, back in the apollo 13 days you know i mean that yeah it's what they're spent on this i mean i get you know we're doing it but what was the mission is there a mission for this or is it just to hook up with the, with the space station uh, yeah i think no i mean i think that was basically it it's like can we get a private public thing going where we can put some people up into space and the key words there were private public yeah no, that's it. I mean, it's NASA's public and <laughs> and SpaceX is private. It was, can we can we get people yeah. into space together? You know. I and, mean, so I wonder how much of it was SpaceX and how much of it was NASA. You know, did NASA help build the rocket? Did they help with the launch? Was it all SpaceX? Well, who, whose equipment are we using here? I think it's mostly stuff developed by SpaceX. And and NASA just has it's like NASA has the the license to go into space. <laughs> the just, license. Just I want to go to space. I'm going to space. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, NASA. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure you're allowed. Even if you're Elon Musk, I'm not sure you're allowed to do that without getting like a partner involved. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like if I if I built something, if I uh, contact, you know, if I did that, build a little contact machine on my own, and uh, you know, the movie contact. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I built my own spacecraft somehow and, and was able to go into space, they would stop me? I think so. I don't think you're allowed to just go into space. <laughs> Why not? They don't own space. Um, it's yeah, like government I'm, property. I'm not sure. I mean, I you know, you can't... There's just some things you can't do. You can't serve liquor to under underage people. Hey, you can't just go into space. I can't go to space like. because I can't go to space. But right. If I could go to space, if I had the ability, am I legally allowed? I mean, I'm sure they have to watch the skies and all that stuff. But yeah, there's like planes, planes take off all the time and satellites up there, and I, don't, I just don't think they can have any. I'm not gonna hit them. I'll be I'll be careful. <laughs> Well, I'm not, all right, I won't go 17,000 miles an hour. I'll keep it under like, under like 4,000. I don't have to go that fast. It's fine. 
We are tackling the reason why we have rules. So this is why we have rules in place. I don't think that's in the rules. For people think. like you that are like, I'm not going to hit this. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to hit the other satellites. How do you know? <laughs> if you build... Okay, here's the thing. If you build a rocket ship well, that can get you into space, you you would have only been... You've not been into space. You don't know how to do those things. NASA knows how to do those things. They know what to expect. If I built a ship, I'm assuming I know a little bit something about what's going on up there. I think you know about building right now, ships. Right now, I don't know. Yeah, I think you'd know about building ships. You'd have to get up there and, and see what it's like. All right, you're up in your ship. You see a satellite hurling towards your way. You think you can get if out of the way. I know my ship. I can get out of the way. But you don't know because you don't know how the satellite's moving and what to expect. Also, I bet you if I put you. Hold on a second. There, I bet you if I put yeah. you in a boat right now, you would have a little trouble getting out of the way. I know how to drive a boat. <laughs> my dad has a boat. I've been on boats. I know my way around boats. <laughs> Maybe not like a cruise ship. <laughs> well, that's exactly well, what talking. this is. That's exactly what this no, is it's like. Not. This is this is. You know, this is a video game, basically. <laughs> yeah, you like to think so. You like to think it's a video game. Hey, if I was building a cruise ship, I would assume I know how to drive a cruise ship. Also, something else I wouldn't trust you with, to be honest with you. I don't think if you were like, I could build a cruise ship, I would be like, I don't think you can. I'm just not no, sure you I can. can. I'm saying if I could, I can't build a rocket to go to, to space. But if I could, there's people that put um, uh, GoPros on balloons that go almost out of the atmosphere yeah if i could you know if they could do that we're only a couple of steps away from breaking the atmosphere i'm not sure they should be doing that and i also think it wasn't that like a red bull thing i think they had i think they worked with nasa on that one no i feel like there's like you go on youtube there's like a hundred videos of people just tying a thing to a balloon and it just goes well that's another thing too the drones like the people have stopped we've stopped the drone thing entirely like you used to be able to just fly a drone and do whatever you want now you can't do that anymore sure you can why not no you can't i can't have, no. why, where can i use a drone there's there's certain regulations that you have to follow to use to be able to fly a drone to do a drone you i mean you could you could do it and put it up in your backyard and it's not you know go up like I go to the park and, 20, and use it i don't know what the rules are but i know that where you, you have to kind of like register with the faa now is basically what it comes down to like the small tiny ones that don't go up that high and are not that big of a deal i don't think anybody cares about too much but it's right. it's super strict now whereas like 3 years ago when everybody was buying drones it is I was like it became mass chaos. You just can't, you know. When the Wright brothers I mean, flew that first plane up there, it wasn't that big of a deal. Everybody can go do what they want, but the, <laughs> eventually, yeah, the FAA you can't have planes going up well, and doing. Eventually, it. I'm talking. I'm, yeah. Say that again. The best internet. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be getting around to uh, building a rocket with this internet I have here. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't get my internet together. I think I'm a, a a little far off from a rocket. I would agree with that. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. But I would love to. I gotta say, if I was able to do it, I'd like to see the law that says I can't go into space if I wanna. I mean, again, technically, I guess you could. I guess if you built your own rocket ship and didn't tell anybody, and you just launched the thing, is nobody it could... legal? Like, are they, could they arrest me for that? I, I would say that by the time you got back, yeah, I would I'd say you'd have some answers. You'd have to have some oh, answers. I can't pass a law while I'm up there. That's just, that's not fair. No, but I just don't think that anybody can go and do anything that they want to do. I just don't think it works that's that way. That's true, but I don't think there's anything on the books telling me I can't do that. Do that. We'll have to check yeah, the I can't murder anybody. That You know, I'm not going to do that. I would never do that. And there's a law telling me I can't do that as well. I'm not going into space because I don't know how to. But if I knew how to, right? There's no. I don't think there's a law that's stopping me. I I would agree with you there. I don't think there's a law saying that people need a license to go into space. But I'm sure there's some sort of international treaty airspace thing that if you just catapult a rocket and don't let the FAA know, I'm sure they can trip you up on some technicality. Well, if I tell somewhere. them I'm on my way, while I'm on my way up. I give him a call. Hey, guys, I'm like 10 minutes from being in space. Just letting you know it's me. 
I pull the old Iron Man move. <laughs> Guys, it's me. I'm in this thing. Don't shoot me down. <laughs> okay. Um, Iron Man's a good point. Like, if you built an Iron Man suit and you just started flying around, like, how did they treat him? Like, there was no rule that said you can't be Iron Man. But, you know, they, right. ha they had him on a bunch of other things that was kind of like, you know, you can't really. I mean, he was doing international, uh, you know, he was uh, taking out international whatever you know villains and stuff like that like uh terrorists and things he was getting involved in in political stuff all i want to do is go out into space right and come back i see <laughs> i'm not you know uh, and you're gonna casually text who are you gonna send a text to on your way up is that part I'll, of it who I'll, are you gonna call no 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 I'll text i'll call i'll google uh, who would you NASA. Call? that's what i want to know you're on this ship you're, you're halfway out there I'm, you, I'm sure I got to call. Uh, you pick up your it, uh, wait. Hold on a second. You pick up your phone, which is working without cell towers. And who are you? Who are you calling? Me, my my ship will be a hot spot. I'll have some kind of connection. I'm not going up there in a in a freaking uh, in a balloon. I'm gonna have the best stuff on my ship. Hi Verizon. Yeah, I need five thousand five G uh, network equipment pieces. I please. guarantee. The closer I get to that sat that Verizon satellite, the better the service is going to be. <laughs> I don't think there is a Verizon satellite. It works off of cell towers that are here on planet. Yeah, Earth. from a satellite. I don't know if the satellite has anything to do with that. Actually, I'm pretty sure there's a satellite with these things. <laughs> is there a Verizon episode, satellite? We're going to call this up. episode two idiots just talking shit." I'm telling you, there's a satellite for phones. <laughs> you... Oh, there are satellite phones. You're... Yeah, there is that. That's no, no, true. No, no. For, for your cell phone. Like, it goes to a satellite, doesn't it? I don't know. I know that you can get a satellite phone that does work off a satellite. But that's a specific phone. Do you know if does I put you in the middle of the ocean a on a cruise ship, yes. it, it would you would be you wouldn't be able to pick up your phone and use your phone. There'd be no service. Correct. Half of Long Island can't get service. <laughs> I mean, hey, if I'm 30,000 30, feet in the air on a plane, I could use it. I wouldn't because you're not supposed to. But you, Yeah, but I think that you, comes they, from the... They have Wi-Fi sometimes. It comes from the plane, though. Right. So I'll have on my ship. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I'll set it up that way. Mm. I'm not half-assing this trip. I also think they would... think a Wiley Coyote and a big rubber band <laughs> no, slingshot? Clearly, you're, you're very well prepared for this. <laughs> I've thought ahead here. <laughs> I also I don't... I got my tools. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure <laughs> twice and cut once. <laughs> By the way, if I'm using wood in my ship, I'm already failed. That's it. It's over. <laughs> if you're using that tape measure, that's like a kid's tape measure. <laughs> that's a tape measure. That Stanley. is a... I don't do any any labor feet. measure <laughs> what I, do i gotta measure that's bigger than 12 feet i'm not building a house <laughs> and the rock is gonna be like maybe maybe more than 12 feet i'm sure i'll have to move around at some point. it won't be a i'm just sitting here rocket it'll be i'm moving around tom hanks style rocket Oh my God! I can't believe you broke it. You literally broke out like a fashion tape measure, and we're like, "I'm gonna build the rocket." I had this from when we were talking about slap bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> well, on my way, babes. To going to going to space tomorrow. <laughs> I'm working on my my tape measure slap bracelets. If you're not distracted and entertained by this, I I just I don't know. I don't know what anybody... else to do for you. Yeah, seriously. But here's the other thing too. I don't even know. It's like it's like how we track down like terrorists and like arms dealers and stuff. Like if you're moving around like a ton of product. Oh, they'll see me. Like I think they're gonna see you coming from from even manufacturing. Like you know. Okay. Then what? Like I'm, what I'm saying is, is I think it's impossible to do because what what you would need to order to manufacture on your own. A spaceship i think they would stop you before you even ever had something assembled because my guess is as True. you're building a rocket ship it's probably very similar oh, yeah. to like a missile it's gonna look like something that could explode of course yeah no i'll be on a bunch of lists but <laughs> i mean putting that aside if i could somehow make the thing 
I knew what I was doing, and go. Yeah. And you I could always, you could always go. Mind. Listen, officers, would a terrorist use this sort of a tape measure? <laughs> if I was going to yeah, bomb they're, something, they're would buying. it be would it be with this thing right here? It's Home Depot, baby. <laughs> I think I don't even. I think this came with the house. I think it's Toys R Us. To be honest with you, I'm pretty sure that's Toys R Us, or or Michael's Craft Store. What are those? Uh, what are those kids uh, like? Play school? It's a, it's yeah, it's a play school. It's thing. play school. <laughs> I'm doing it. No, I'm not doing it. I can't. I'm the rocket. I wonder though. Do you think you could actually build? Do you think some like? Elon Musk is a perfect case. Or who's the guy? Who's the other guy who yeah. does Virgin Atlantic? There was a g- Richard Branson. Oh, yeah, the guy with the white hair. One of these billionaire adventurer type guys. You think they could literally build one of these things in their backyard and and pop it off? But I don't see why not. I wonder. I mean, that's what Elon Musk did. All he did was partner up with NASA. I guess because he didn't have the. I don't know, the, the room full of people to tell them all systems go. I don't know how it works. I don't know what he needed from NASA. You know, I'm sure he needed something or else he wouldn't have partnered up with them, I'm sure, you know. I mean, well, I mean, they, they were the ones who, until, until, I mean, until this right now, I don't know if private companies ever really went up there. It was always countries and governments. Yeah, the government, because those are the only ones that could afford it, I'm sure, right? I mean, what was the, the space suits back then, we said, was, uh, was just yeah. the suits alone were in the millions. They said the suits, the, in 1970, the suits that they were using on, uh, on, to go up to space were between 15 and 22, cost 15 and $22 million, which if you That's adjusted for inflation number. today, it'd be $150 million. Yeah, that's why nobody's. That's why nobody can go into space except the government. Uh, nobody has that money, and the people that do, they're not going to spend all of it on a suit. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you gotta get the rocket. You gotta get a few people involved. I'm sure. I'm sure more than one person is involved uh, in going into space. But as I sit here and laugh at how ridiculous your statements are, I'm now I'm starting to think to myself, I'm. I am kind of surprised that no billionaire has actually tried to to do this, to do something like this. Or maybe this is this Wasn't is Wasn't there a giant idiot that tried the 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 flat earther guy who tried to get into a rocket and see if the earth was flat by going up there himself? I don't know. Was there really? That was like a few years ago. He he built he built his own rocket. And hmm. I don't think he got more than like 50 feet off the ground, but at least he he did something that flew. He built something on his own. I mean, people build their own planes and stuff. It's not like out of out of the ordinary. People build space, not space, aircraft all the time. People have too much time on their hands is, I think, what it comes down to. That's true. By the way, speaking of the suits, I mean, how much more sleeker are these suits than those old clunky? They look like they're out of a, out of a movie from uh, 200 years from now. You know, it's so funny that you said that because... Elon Musk worked on these suits for three to four years and he actually you're going to love this. He tapped uh, this designer, Jose Fernandez, who was a costume designer for superhero oh, movies wait. such as Batman versus Superman, the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, X-Men 2, among others. So this is literally nice. art imitating life, imitating art, imitating life, that the guy who was responsible for coming up with the superhero suits in the movies got to design <laughs> the suit to go up into outer space. I mean, I understand computers being huge back then, 30, 40, 50 years ago, but why did the suits have to be gigantic too? Yeah. I, again, I was so disappointed in this. We were talking about this just before we started the podcast. I didn't realize that they weren't going into outer space. These these guys, they're just going into the space station, so they don't need like the big clunky suit that they used to have back in the day for when they were like walking on the on on the uh, moon. If they were walking on the moon, I think it would be a bigger, clunkier suit. That's true. I mean, if you, I'm looking ahead, I'm looking at the uh, the suits from the original Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Not that far off. They look like they look exactly like it. Yeah. Yeah, you know they're just sleek uh, flight suits, basically for like 
for pilots. I mean, I'm trying to find a helmet shot, but I don't think it's the same thing. Like where you're like every every alien, every spaceman, you know, in the in movies looks exactly the same. It's like, well, there's not really much you could do with it. It's it is such a cliche to see like it's that silver it's shiny look like a suit. person. Yeah, like you really like what else can you really do with that that form? But it Which does. Which is why I'm, I'm telling you that where anybody who sees aliens. I mean, what do they look like? They look like people, but yeah. like in suits, like really future. Maybe it's time trial. Maybe aliens are humans coming back in time. That is a theory that is out there. That that that's exactly that is a real theory. Did you know that, or are you just did you just come? To I that? actually came up with that on my own, and then I knew I knew that was a thing. The theory, yeah, the theory is is the reason why they look like humans is because they are humans. They're just going back. They're time traveling. It's not. Yeah coming from another and they're place. evolved humans they're right you know like as bigger eyes they don't you know right they're wearing they're wearing coronavirus suits you know like, that kind of thing which is what <laughs> which is what is so interesting about this virus and this idea which is we communicate this way which is obviously problematic during this time whereas as if we were just communicating you know through and we do that so we we communicate non-verbally you know, sure. people can do that all the time sure but if you're talking about full conversations like telepathy that's i'm sure where many generations <laughs> well yeah and elon musk actually is is big on this because elon musk is developing he's developing some sort of a brain thing that is the purpose of it is to help people with brain injuries. So if you have a f severe brain injury, they go in and put this stuff in with the hopes of you'll be able to talk again or walk again or whatever, you know, whatever is taking the person cool. down at that time. What's interesting though is, is you can literally still put that stuff in a brain without any brain injury or damage and see what it could do. And this that would be interesting. This comes back into the form of now you're talking about human robot hybrids, basically, or superhumans or whatever. And now you're really getting into some sci fi comic book stuff of what will that love it turn the world into? Because yeah, we're evolving very fast with our technology, I mean. Yeah, because the argument is, and this is really super interesting, we have a lot of nonverbal way of communicating right now. I send you a text message, right? Um, mm -hmm. I have to physically think of it, run it through all the synapses, up the nerves, into my fingers, put it into the computer that way. If you just eliminate that process through the nerves, fingers, computer, you know, if you eliminate from my fingers to this screen, what does that look like? I mean, that's a huge step. That's a huge elimination. It, that's it, like 98% of it. It is. And that's, that's probably the, it's weird because that's probably the scariest part for people to hear. But also when you think about it, it is such a tiny, minute part of it. Because it's I'm, a small step and it takes that, that amount of time. Yeah. But it's crucial for me to send you a message. Like I can't, I can't send you a message without this step. Right. There's something, there's something comforting about, let me type it into my phone, but sure. It is still a nonverbal communication, not using any, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. What's the difference if you just take that out of the mix and I can just think about it in my little, with my little Elon Musk helmet and fire that's it off the difference the to Elon your... Musk helmet is the difference <laughs> the huge difference that does not exist yet or if it does it's not yeah public yet. yeah but, you know what uh, you know what's no, strange that's... you know what's strange Frank we I feel like for a long time there we were there was a you know like if you look at the last hundred years or so right we had a lot of world wars and world conflict and that kind of thing and you know the scary the scariness in the world was is another country going to take us over is there going to be nuclear war that this and that kind of thing when that sort of died down there was always and there's always this look of like aliens like technology in the future and then comes the 90s and you get uh not total recall what's the uh, the terminator and uh -huh. was it skynet 
Skynet. <laughs> Are we going to destroy ourselves building something that destroys us? And and you you kind of look at it, you go, that's so ridiculous. And how could it ever get to that? And when you put it in in a form of literally the only thing stopping us from the Elon Musk helmet is we haven't developed the technology yet to do so because we're essentially doing this right now in its crudest of forms, right? Yeah, but when you say we're the only thing stopping us is that we haven't developed technology. Yeah, the only thing stopping me from teleporting around the world is that we haven't developed the technology. But that's a huge step to take. Right, but it, but what I mean, we have not been stopped. Like tech lack of technological development has never ever stopped us we've always gotten there no oh, i mean always and, it, lot, and well not and with everything yet even yourself though even you were just like uh, you were enthralled by the idea of this communication without you know a helmet or whatever there is this innate desire in us to to do that to be to incorporate technology is. within our cell. what is that it's that superhero mentality i want to be a superhuman if you could have a superpower you'd want to have it i mean like communicating telepathically is a superpower right that we all get from comic books and things and we're like yeah i want to do that if you could fly without any kind of apparatus you'd want to do that even if the the idea of it will ultimately lead to our demise is there. And before you answer that, let me throw this other thing out there. Because we don't know if it will ultimately lead to our demise. But if you look at every single artistic expression of what this looks like, it all comes out the same way. Whether it's iRobot or terminator to, like it all we we oh, yeah. we not, not only have this desire but we also we also are predicting it in our art as this is the way it's gonna go and it's going to be bad well there's a difference because in our art we're doing it for entertainment and without conflict it's not entertaining so you got to have that conflict element in there so there's got to be challenges there's got to be roadblocks. You can't. Everything can't go as smoothly. I mean, man, we got to get you some iRobot internet. Go ahead. Seriously. Um, so there, there's there are movies that are set in the distant future, where the technology that we haven't come up with yet is fine, and we have you know, but there's like maybe one thing that there's a problem with. You know, we don't know that there's got to be conflict in our entertainment. I understand that. But like when you think about all the things in the world we can make movies about, we have dreamt up these scenarios and put it out there. And what's what, what's interesting is, you know, when Terminator and Terminator 2, when those came out, I would look at that and be like, that is so far fetched and ridiculous. And now I kind of look at that. And I go, well, <laughs> I mean, just don't give the robots guns and we'll be fine. <laughs> don't give the robots guns. But, w you know, but who knows? Like, it's weird, but the dawn of social media and this super connected world. And, you know, again, like we, we've we've really we've done everything but literally put these things into our bodies just to be this like super connected. And, I mean, oh, we'll get there. You like you look at what's already, going. I remember, I remember reading it. Uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, that there are companies that put chips in their employees, so that they can like, it's like their building code. It's got all their information on it. They just swipe to get into the building. Yeah, it's like a literal chip that they inject. That's into crazy. Their body somehow. Yeah, but there's companies that. that the do weird, that. the weird thing That's, about that it's is, it's gonna happen. It's so appealing because it's a convenient and b. You never have to worry about, oh, I forgot my key. I forgot my pass card. I forgot this. I forgot. That ruins your day for the most part, you know? Yeah. Uh, on the other side, you know, you got a company with its computer chip in you. You, know? <laughs> you got to weigh the good with the bad. You know? I know. I it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy to think about. So if they came out with a, f a cell phone that you could put 
it doesn't look like this. It's a little chip, maybe that's into it, they put into your brain. Yeah, and it does everything a cell phone can. You could send texts, you could call people, you could look on the internet, everything, play games, whatever it is. Would you do it? It's a great question. I here's before I say yes or no. I don't. I used to even think it mattered, and now I just don't anymore, because I feel like everybody's going to do it anyway. I mean, you look back at people and how many people did you know that were like, I'm not getting a smartphone. I'm not getting that. That's so stupid. That's so ridiculous. What do I, I to need? forget about those people. What? I forgot about all those people. I don't know. <laughs> but how many people said, what do I need to send a text anymore? What do I need to send a text for? What do I need to do this for? What do I need to do that for? How many people said that at the time? Well, it's a generational thing. It's it's the next generation is going to be way into it. This generation, you know, look, think about your father, and your, you know, your yeah. parents, your grandparents. They don't, they're not into texting as much as we are. They're not, but they have. That's what I'm. But that's my point. Even all the people that we know that were like, I'm not getting a smart. What do I, for what? I got to do this. I got to do that. I'm not doing that. All those people right now are doing it. They have a smartphone yeah. and they're doing it. Because the rest of the world did it and they'd be left behind exactly so you know you ask this great question which is an is a great question and uh, and my answer i would i you don't want to be the first well no my answer would my answer would be like oh i guess if i say no it'll slow this down because that's what people who say no would do they'd be like no i'm not going to do that because this is gonna but my point is is that i don't think you can uh, saying no doesn't even matter because it's gonna go that way no, anyway you, oh i see but I wouldn't want to be the guinea pig if there's a couple of things wrong with that. One, um, yeah, there's a thing in your head. I get it. It can't be good for you. But if they say, hey, it's good for you, it's, you know, it's fine, it doesn't do anything bad, there are people that are going to like hack into it and shit. Now yeah. you got like a hacker in your brain. Yeah. It's weird because, uh, you know, coming out with a new iPhone, I need to be the first one to get it. I just, I need it. I like, I'm one Why? of those people. But, you know, uh, y y it's funny because we, we were talking, I was talking about this on, on the radio the other day, t two, three weeks ago, which is if they made space travel affordable, would you do it? And my answer was, and I still stand by this, I'm, I'm a buffer guy. I need a good, like, time buffer that I know it's perfectly safe to do. You know what I yeah, mean? You don't want to be the guinea pig. I don't want to be the guinea pig. Like new technology, okay, give it to yeah. me now. G can I possibly die from this? Hold on a second. You know what I mean? So that kind of mixes both worlds together. I think I would I would be erring on the side of hold on a second. I don't want to do that right away. I want to yeah. see. I don't want to be the first person and you know to do that. Yeah. No, screw that. But if 50 years from now, 50 years of my life. Yeah, I'm alive. Yeah. Knock on wood. Um, they're, they're putting cell phones in your head. And they've, they've been doing it for 20 years. But again, this goes back into mass control stuff. Because like we're seeing with social media, and, and this is guaranteed going to be a huge problem. A little bit of a dust up between President Trump and Twitter the other day. But I've been talking about this for years. About how... And I'm, by the way, this is not a complaint in either direction. This is not a political statement. This is just the truth of the matter. You have a massive amount of communication in the, in the hands of very, very few. And that's never a good situation, ever. That's true. You know, there's I mean, six different social media networks out there, but that's still, a, that's still too small of people to have that sort of control but any larger i feel like if uh, any larger you, it's going to get confusing and you know, people won't know where to look and yeah but that's the thing that when there's options it's way harder for society like if you go to a buffet and there's three things you're going to get one of the three things going to be quick you're going to move on right if there's 20 things you don't know which way to start you don't know what to get you're looking you know so that's the thing. It's gonna. It's. it's well, it'll be confusing. If that's happening that. now, though. That's happening now, where people are seeing. If is. you're, it's if too you're much as it is. so much more tied into this, and you're on Twitter, you know a lot more of what's going on in the world than somebody yeah. who's just not on Twitter. 
agreed and has no That's idea what you know so it's it's that's kind of happening now but it's it's scary and and the scary thing is with this is if you know if this technology was developed like it ain't coming from you know 14 15 20 different entities it's coming from elon <laughs> you know what i mean like it's coming from two or three different places and they're going to have singular control over that thing I was talking about oh. this the other day on the on the radio. It's weird that it is tied into Elon Musk again, but Elon developed the uh, tunnels under Los Angeles, right? The LA gave him the land underneath. If you want to buy land right now, you buy the land. You don't buy underneath the land. So they gave him underneath the land uh, and they said, go ahead, dig, dig your tunnels, you know, do what you want to do. And he developed this tunnel prototype that was specifically made for teslas and it's not that you couldn't put another vehicle down there but the thing was made to perform at its optimum capability with a self-driving tesla and that that's what it was made for and it's like if this guy figures it out first who do you think's going to get the rights to every single tunnel digging system in the it's going to be him and then what do you think that's going to do for his car sales or for people who want to avoid traffic of course it will but he's got to partner with people too. He can't do it all on his own. He had a partner with, <clears throat> at, with California and the government and everything. But if we got to a place where the, the boring company was building tunnels all throughout the United States, okay, to, which, which would allow lots of people to skip traffic in their local city, what do you think uh -huh. that's going to do to Ford and, and you know, GM and... You know, all yeah, these, they'll fall behind. They're gonna fall behind. Well, that's, that's what happens with with capitalism. You get companies that come out with something better. Yeah, the older stuff gets left behind. That's it's the great it thing. It it's the great thing about it. It sucks for the older companies, but yeah, typewriter. You know, no one's making typewriters anymore. But again, it. I know. But again, it's like it's it's scary when it's something that one singular entity can control, or yeah, or be attacked and lose control over right this is this is basically we're talking about the arc and the crux of every single superhero film that's come out in the last 15 years which is yep. should such power reside in one singular little small group it probably shouldn't but the problem is laws don't ca are way behind where we are technologically and yeah. communication wise the, the laws are going to take the next i feel like the next generation We'll work on internet law, uh, technology, uh, any kind of technology, property, intellectual property, all that, st all the modern stuff. Mm. I, I don't think it's for our current system to to regulate because they are made up of way older people that don't know about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, internet is another big thing. People believe, and I kind of feel the same way, that internet should be a public thing, you know? We pay for we pay for roads. We pay all the you know we pay for bridges and tunnels to get around. Uh, it's not like we pay Verizon for our roads or we pay, you know, Time Warner for our bridges. You know, we don't we don't do that. Right. And we use we use the internet probably more than some of our public roadways. And the reason why we have public roads is because that was basically the easiest thing than having a bunch of private companies you know build and maintain the roads and the bridges and all that stuff yeah I, there are some that's called that's uh socialism that's what that is we have some socialist things in our country oh some of it's yeah of stuff course that we no no yeah we're not yeah. a socialist country but i'm saying there are a lot of things that we have yeah ba that is that are based on socialism public parks public roads anything the government you pay taxes for that the government regulates right public transit but some right, some of them is some of them is that. is built out of sheer and and some of them are with private companies, right? Private companies built sure. actually put the roads down and all that stuff. Um, but you know there are some things that we all use so much that you literally the only way you can kind of do it is if it's up to the if the government puts it together. And I think that the internet is reaching that standpoint. Like so, you'll still have companies that maintain the internet and do all that stuff but i think that it's it's the kind of thing where i wouldn't be surprised if that sort of a thing is rolled up into taxes one day and just 
you know, that's basically because the need will be so great as we evolve. It'll be more than just computers and this and that, that, you know, that's what, that's what it'll have to be. It'll have to be a wide open, yeah, I mean, you know, public thing. Well, what happened? What I feel like maybe what happened was the internet was created outside of the government. And that's why it's, it's hard to regulate like TV and radio were created, but I feel like the government was in on it first. Like they controlled radio because of wartime and all this stuff. Every, they were like partners in, in all of it, but the radio was created in the modern, modern day. And it was created by, you know, just smart people just that can do it. Now it's now the government has to step in and regulate that. That's the battle I think. Right. Yeah. And and I think it's the internet to regulate the internet's going to be the same thing. And I, I kind of in a weird way feel like social media is going to be the same thing. Yeah. Like similar to how we all have social security cards. I just, I feel like you, you're going to have to exist on the internet one day in a legal way, not in some name that you created on Facebook or some handle you picked on Instagram or Twitter. I feel like we already kind of do exist on, on that, you know, all our banking shit is on there. All our, you know, government document, everything we're on, we're all over the internet. Yeah. So I'm going into space. <laughs> I'm going underground. I think I'm going to go that I'm going to go start, the other way. Start building. You go up. I'll go or I'll go up. You go down. I'll start building my rocket. That tape, man, nothing says I don't do. I don't do work be, in my house more than that tape measure. This tape measure is going to get me into space. <laughs> this thing is step one right here. It's going to be my, my little, my trophy. <laughs> All right. If you made it this far, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, remember to rate and review on Apple podcast and uh, like, and follow on Facebook and, of course, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Links for all of this information is up at anthonyonair.com. I miss J. Sabs today. I feel like she would have added a lot to the... the always. As yeah, always. Yeah. Yeah, we could have used her at some point. We could have definitely used her facial expressions when you were talking about <laughs> building your own... I think she would have packed me up. No, if I know this podcast, <laughs> the two of you would have been against me in some weird way and would have made fun of me for... Well, I wasn't really with you on... Lasted on that one i was basically against you but i so you're I playing devil's advocate but i don't think you're against a private citizen building uh, uh, their own way to space no well it depends on the private citizen just because i know you doesn't think doesn't mean that you're qualified a smart private citizen <laughs> that's that's what you're not against if a smart person can do it more power to them going I, to space i guess so i guess so but as we're seeing the last couple of days even our really sm our smartest people eh, I don't know. I'm not the smartest people. Not feeling that comfortable with it, basically. All right. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode.